Hello student, I'm Mr. Leung. So in this video, we are going to talk about the second half of this chapter 3 assignment. So we are going to talk about uh, three long questions. So for the first long question, question 12, uh, is it question, how can we apply the knowledge of the cellular transport to the daily life? So that's why I would like to talk about the small intestine first. So uh, digestive food is absorbed in the in small intestine. And in the in form 3, actually we have already learned the villi this uh, finger-like projection in the small intestine. So, and in this question, I would like to introduce one more cell to you. That's the epithelial cell. Epithelial cell, that's the outermost layer of the villi, okay, these little cells. And actually, it's just like the other normal cells, okay, with the cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, so on and so forth. And especially, I would like to mention that actually in the epithelial cells, okay, there are high uh, there are a large amount of mitochondria. There are a lot of mitochondria in the epithelial cell. But for what? You tell me later on. Okay, so for part A, with reference to the structure of the cell membrane, actually that's what we learned in the chapter fluid mosaic model to explain something. The first thing is that the fatty acid, which is uh, the which which are the non-polar molecules, they can diffuse across the cell membrane directly into the epithelial cells. That's the first part. And for the second part is that the amino acid, the polar molecules, they can be taken up from the intestinal lumen into the epithelial cell. That means from the outside, okay, and to be taken up to the epithelial cell, the first part. But they cannot diffuse across the epithelial cell membrane back to the lumen. So that means the amino acid, they can be taken up to the cell, but they cannot diffuse back to the lumen okay by themselves so that's why they only in they cannot go out so tell me the reason for a uh, for a1 and a2 so for a1 it's talking about the fatty acid for the non-polar things okay the cell membrane we uh, the first question i would like to answer me is that the cell membrane is composed of a do -do 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 bilayer and being non-polar molecules the fatty acid can dissolve in the phospholipid bilayer and how can they move across or uh, pass through the cell membrane diffusion or by osmosis you tell me okay so that's part a1 and for part a2 actually there are two parts of the question the first part is that how or why the amino acid can be taken up okay uh, from the lumen to the epithelial cell especially they are polar molecules uh, after answering part a1 actually you know that oh, for the non-polar molecules, they can pass through the cell membrane. There must be reason, okay? But for the polar molecules, if you can recall the nature of the phospholipid bilayer, the phosphate head and the fatty acid tail, so somehow you should know that the polar molecules, okay, they cannot directly move across the cell membrane. There must be another way, okay? So that's the first part. And for the second part is that, so why the amino acid, okay, they cannot diffuse back to the lumen, okay, diffuse across the cell membrane. And the reason, okay, you are going to uh, uh, answer me. So for A2, being polar, the amino acid cannot dissolve in the blah, 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 okay, and then they cannot diffuse across the cell membrane. That's the first mark. And that's why the protein, okay, there are some protein channel or uh, uh, like carrier protein, okay? They are spanning across the phospholipid bilayer and provide a hydrophilic or hydrophobic channel for, uh, for transporting the amino acid across the cell membrane. So, as mentioned in the question, amino acid, they are polar molecules. So that's why, um, are they hydrophilic or hydrophobic? You can find it in the textbook, okay? And finally, why they cannot diffuse across the epithelial cell and bring back to the lumen? Because the transport of the amino acid by this channel or by the carrier is unidirectional or in both directions. You tell me the answer. So that's part A2. And for part B, name a mechanism for transporting glucose across the cell membrane and state the difference between this mechanism and diffusion. So somehow the first question I would like to uh, ask you is that we call the nature of glucose molecules. Polar or non-polar, you can find it in the book. And then think about the uh, food absorption. The glucose will be completely absorbed from, from the lumen 
uh, of the small intestine into the villi. So they should be completely because glucose is very, very useful substance for us. So how can you make sure that you can absorb all the glucose even against the concentration gradient? Okay, think about it. So for example, outside the uh, uh, outside the epithelial cell, that's the intestine lumen. There are 100 uh, glucose molecules, and inside the cells, okay, there is no glucose molecule. Just imagine 100 and zero. Okay, so later on, 100, zero, 90, 10, 80, 20, 70, 30. Okay, so keep diffusing, diffusing, diffusing. Okay, that's okay. But what about if uh, outside 50, 50? Okay, and inside also 50. So how can you, uh, how can the glucose molecule diffuse anymore because it's already evenly distributed, right? And even if what about oh really some glucose, okay, they really diffuse across to the uh, across the membrane and go the other way, okay? So that's why if we are facing the concentration gradient like forty outside but sixty inside the cells, so how can we make sure that the glucose, okay, they can be transport against the concentration gradient. There is a way what uh, we learn in the textbook. Okay, so that's why you can uh, name the mechanism for uptaking uh, the glucose across the cell membrane against the concentration gradient. And we call what I say in the epithelial cells. There are a lot of at uh, a lot of mitochondria. So what is the function of mitochondria? If you can answer me, you will be able to name the process, okay, the mechanism. And then the second part, okay, state the difference between the mechanism and uh, diffusion. So that's why if you can name it, okay, so uh, which process, okay, they require energy or not, or they can move against or along the concentration gradient. But what I want you to know is that to complete comparison, please, okay, A is something, something. But B is something, something. Okay, complete comparison. That's what we learned in chapter two. Don't forget it. Okay. So for uh, question fifteen, okay, that's a very short question. So uh, what you are going to do is uh, matching. Okay. So you have A, B, C, D, the cellular transport mechanism, active transport, diffusion, osmosis, and phagocytosis. Okay. So for column one, there are two processes. Okay. So the first process is hemolysis of rubber cell when uh, the rubber cell is placed uh, in 0.1% sodium chloride solution, the salt solution. Okay. So hemolysis, what does it mean? Hemo, that means blood. Lysis, breakdown. So hemolysis, that means the uh, rupture of the rubber cells and then the content in the rubber cell will be released. For example, the cytochrome, for example, the hemoglobin. Okay, so that's the hemolysis. So uh, the simple idea is that if we place the rubber cell in the isotonic solution, that means the outside solution, the concentration is the same as the cell content of the rubber cell. So that's why their water potential should also be the same and th there will be no net movement of water molecules in and out of the cells, okay? So isotonic. And for the hypertonic concept is that the rubber cell they are placed in a very high concentration solution. For example, uh, maybe 20% uh, salt solution, something like this. So, so that means for the outside solution, the concentration is too high and the water potential will be lower than that of the rubber cell. Okay, so that's why there will be a net movement of water molecules going out of the rubber cell to make the rubber cell become shrink. Okay, and for the hypotonic solution, hypotonic, that means the outside solution is so diluted, very low concentration, okay, than the cell content of rubber cell. So that's why outside solution, the water potential will be higher than that in the rubber cell. So that's why the, there will be net movement of water molecules going into the rubber cell and then make the rubber cell swell and finally they will be burst, okay? They will burst and there will be hemolysis, rupture of rubber cells and the content will be released. So in this concept, okay, you, you, you have already heard I say water potential for many, many times. So I think you can get 
the correct choice. And for the second one, uptake of oxygen, okay? So oxygen, you can recall from the book, oxygen molecules, they are small and non-polar molecules, so they can move across the cell membrane directly, okay? So especially, that means they can move across the phospholipid bilayer directly, okay? So for A, B, C, D, okay? So which one should be the correct word to describe how can the oxygen move across the cell membrane? And for question 16, okay, that's also about the small intestine. And this time we are going to investigate the uh, rate of absorption of different sugars in the small intestine. There are two parts of the experiment. The first part is that we use the normal intestine. And for the second part is that we use the intestine, but the intestine is poisoned by cyanide. Cyanide is a poisonous chemicals because it can prevent or it can inhibit or it can slow down or even stop the respiration okay so um, for this question okay i would like to mention first before i talk about a1 and a2 so for this question okay actually the core concept is that you need to relay uh, the relationship okay relay the respiration and the active transport together and for the chapter one concept revision so respiration is the process of Break, uh, breakdown of the food to release the energy stored in the food so that's why there's a uh, energy releasing process okay and what about active transport active transport you can refer to the diagram in your textbook okay energy is used to carry out active transport okay and one of the use is that energy is used to, to change the shape of the carrier protein or the channel protein to make sure that they can transport something against the concentration gradient or to move something along the concentration gradient but no matter what they move the thing across the cell membrane okay so that's the concept here and then for a1 and a2 okay name the uh, two sugars from the table which can be absorbed by the active transport so what you are going to compare is the relative rate of absorption in normal intestine and in the intestine poison by cyanide so actually the first level of analyze is that for the two column normal intestine absorption 1 1.1 1, 0 0.3 something like this okay and for the intestine poison by the cyanide uh, uh, 0 0.33 0 0.53 0 0.31 0 0.29 okay so that's the two columns you are going to investigate first okay any difference between them okay to to name that or oh, uh, which two sugars okay they are trans uh, absorbed by active transport and if you cannot compare it by level one okay i give you two more hints is that okay glucose and galactose okay we group them in group okay to analyze it and for the other two sugar okay we group uh group them in another group okay so for these two part you can find that how can you use the data okay to explain why you choose these two sugars okay so the concept is that we observe the two columns okay and observe that the rates of the absorption of these two sugars were increased or reduced in the presence of cyanide because active transport okay this process it requires what and if something is present less or no energy will be released so that's why it will affect the rate of respir uh, effects of uh, affects the rate of absorption okay so this part okay this paragraph is for a2 after you know the concept of a2 so i think that you can name the two sugars for me okay the rate of absorption of these two sugars should be come lower okay than before after we add the cyanide so that's for the a1 and a2 so for the last part part b so uh, we are talking about that uh, the all the sugars named in the table can be absorbed by diffusion so uh, the question asks you to explain how the information provide any evidence to support this uh, concept so uh, the as what we did okay in part a so we are going to compare the two columns okay normal intestine and the intestine poisoned by the cyanide and to this time the concept is diffusion so uh, the thinking process here is that if we just think it in a reversed way okay so imagine that 
Now, now the question is talking about the the sugar can also be absorbed by diffusion. Now that's what we uh, that's what I mentioned by the question. But we think about it in a reversed way. Okay, reverse way is that if those sugars, all these sugars, can only be absorbed by active transport, so for the normal intestine, okay, one one point one zero point three o, that's still fine. But for the intestine poisoned by cyanide, if those sugar were only absorbed by active transport, there would not be any absorption in the intestine poisoned by the cyanide, right? Because uh, if we add cyanide, uh, the respiration will be inhibited, so no more energy will be released for the active transport as well. So there should be no any uptake. But what we see here is that there are still some glucose being absorbed, even the intestine is poisoned by the cyanide. So that's why there must be a way that which does not require energy, and it can also still help. To absorb the sugar, so that's what we we just think it in in a reversed way, okay? To clarify the concept, so by the table we can see that all the sugars named in the table can be absorbed when the gut is poisoned by something. With the cyanide, the respiration will be inhibited, no more energy will be released, but. We can still absorb the sugars in the small intestine, okay, by diffusion. Because diffusion, this process does not need something, okay. So you just complete this paragraph for me, okay, and then you can answer question sixteen part B. So if you have any question, please leave it in the comment, okay. And we see, I uh, see you next time. Bye bye.